Hi, everyone. I'm back. And uh, with me, as is usually the case, is Corey. Say hi, Corey. Hey, how's it going? And uh, we're going to dive in today and try to... I'm going to try to uh, fumble around less in the dark. Uh, ahead of the video, I just re-imported all of the sound files that weren't working and tested, and they are all working now. And uh, we got in a couple of new sound effects, most of which we haven't used yet. But one I did uh, add in just to test was the uh, little magical chime effect when you jump up and grab the heart pickup item. And uh, so we're going to just dive in and start getting some other stuff done. There's a minor cosmetic uh, update that I should do while I have it in mind, is I updated the HUD to make a room on the left for the lives. So let's see if I have that in the right place. So that was save. Let's see here. It's the under HUD. Where is it? Now there we go. So that's updated and now we have to reposition this stuff. Oh yeah, and I did increase its height by one pixel because it was clashing with the lives, the font lives height. So I need to quickly update these and I don't think I did in the thing. So uh, we can use this to resize and make the height 10 pixels and then align top left. And then I could just grab this, control C, control V. There we go, that's pretty painless. Not do bad. The same thing here. Okay, so it's just other frames, that's good. All right, so resize 10. Oops, I stretched it. Too bad it doesn't remember your setting from before. That'll slow me down a couple seconds, but no big deal. All right. So I hope that makes sense what I explained the... Oh, what happened? There it looks like it has a little checkbox there. It says apply to whole animation. Oh, yeah, good point. Thanks for spotting that. All right, so apply to whole animation. So I don't have to do this step over and over again. There we go. Control C, V. And this. Control C, V. There, definitely saved us some time. Sweet. All right. So yeah, it just looked weird before. Those were one pixel shorter than the the uh, font, so mm -hmm. it just looked really misaligned. But now that's sweet. Okay, save progress, and now let's move on to other stuff. So one thing that I've been doing before the video is just getting ready. Uh, we decided we're gonna give the character this cool uh, bash downward attack for when he's in the air. And the way it's going to work is the, the player's actually going to, if you hold down while you're jumping up in the air and you press attack, instead of doing your normal sort of forward attack, you'll pause in the air dramatically with your uh, arms over your head and then you'll swing down really quickly. And if you hit an enemy in this attack mode, the enemy will get sent flying downward on an angle, uh, kind of like a meteor or a comet. And um, not only will this obviously severely hurt the airborne enemy that you hit, but that enemy can also go flying and hit into ground-based enemies and hurt them. So uh, so that's what we're going to do is uh, re-import the spider file. I already saved it out as both SCML and SCON, so I should be able to just drag it in here. Like so, and then click yes, and spider events. And it should have created, there you can see the new sprite it created. And so now I just need to go to the Spriter events and delete that old uh, uninitialized event. So now we have access to those new animations, which uh, are not going to be visible, visible yet until we come up with a way to initiate that new move. So that'll be the first step. So let me clear this. Go into animate player or player animation. And I think right now I just have the player controls kind of worked into this whole group. I don't think I like isolated out a player control section yet. 
Yeah, which I'll probably do some point soon. But so right here is Super Jump. And we should add a special sound effect to the super jump when he, like, a little grunt as he jumps into the air would be kind of cool, but we'll do that some other time. So I'm just going to steal this whole event because it's similar. Right now we have up and down is less than, which means holding up. We want holding down. So we're going to do uh, greater than. So that means if the player is holding down on the controller or however, the touch screen, the keyboard, and this is jump, so we don't want jump, we want attack, so B2, which is button 2, stuck in move equals 0, and this we want the opposite, player is on the floor, so we're going to invert this. So he's not on the floor, he's not stuck in a move, he's holding down and he presses attack, so now we need to trigger his animation, and for that reason I always have the spider file open, I could literally double click on the name of an animation, uh, and then copy it so then I can make sure that I'm not going to slightly misname it and deal with errors that are just caused because I didn't type the name the exact same way twice. Alright, so and then here is definitely something we don't want. We don't want him to suddenly jump. And in fact, what we do want to do is we're going to temporarily pause his gravity. So we are going to do player box platform behavior and we are going to just set it disabled so set enabled disabled all right so he's going to get stuck in the air and he's going to play his air bash animation if we do this all right so that'll it should work but there's going to be a few problems which we shall see i'm going to test it now all right let's see oh, currently it is not working i wonder what i did wrong Oh, it's one of those circumstances again. Remember how we have somewhere else the attack thing. It's just like the reason Super Jump uh, wasn't working at first in the last video. Oh, uh, yeah. So we have, let's see, so there's got to be another B2. Here it is. So B2 is pressed, stuck and move is zero. It's going to do this, and that's going to change stuck and move instantly to one. So this will never work. Mm -hmm. So we need to do this, and uh, we could change this to say is less than or equal to zero. So he can yep. be pressing up or he can be um, not pressing anything in the up or down direction. And regular punch will come out. So now if he's holding down the super jump, sh I mean the um, bash attack, air bash attack should come out. So let's try that again. Yes. All right, he's stuck there. As that's what I expected, but as you can see, it's working. He's in the tree. Yeah. <laughs> he just grabbed a branch while he was up there. All right. He's afraid of heights. Once he was up that high, he was afraid to fall down. It's um, all right. So gives gives a whole new meaning to stuck and move. Oh yeah, that is true. All right. So what we need to do are a few things here. Let's just find where we were with B2 again. So it's at line 25. All right, air bash. We disable it. So now we're going to do right under here. Uh, new event above and hero on animation finished. Let's see if it's still on the clipboard. Nope. Air bash. Hopefully that's typed the same way. Uh, air bash looks it. All right, so is it finished? We need to set. Oh, yeah, stuck and move. That's interesting. Stuck and move does not get set here, and it really should. Oh, I see why, because during a super jump, you don't want to be stuck in a move. But during the attack, you should be. And then, so when air bash finishes, you should not be stuck in a move anymore. But more importantly, the. Um, oops, that meant that was meant to be zero, not ten. So the other thing is uh, we need to re-enable the platform behavior. And then uh, the only other thing is theoretically you could trigger this move even when you're still flying upward. And because we disable the uh, 
platformer behavior, it's like paused, so to speak. So when we re-enable re -enable it, you're going to keep flying upward. And I think it would be more intuitive if you just started falling after doing the air bash mm -hmm. instead of like just suddenly continuing with your upward momentum. So we're just going to uh, set the um, vector Y to a positive number so that you definitely start falling immediately after finishing the air bash. So let's just make sure all of this is working. Okay. Nice. As you can see, all that's working. All right, cool. All right, everything's working except I just noticed there was an old. It looks like a bug, but it's just something that I that I intentionally broke last time that I forgot to fix, and that was his hit points should start at four, and we made it at one because we were testing the death sounds. All no, right. If anyone remembers uh, those, uh, so far the votes are for alternate death, by the way, the alternate death zone. All right, so now that we got that part working, the sensible next step is to get in the uh, blur attack specific, or the blur effect, I should say, specific to this. So we're going to add an animation to this sprite and call it air bash. And then we're going to select it and uh, import frames from a, I think I saved out a strip. So now just find the other strip, there we go. And then tell it it's three strips across and replace and yes. And now we've got, got it as we need it to be, but let's get its anchor point in the right place and make that apply to the whole animation. There we go. And then we should also make the speed the same as the other blurs uh, animation. There we go. So it's called air bash with capitalized uh, letters of the first uh, word, uh, you know, of each word. All right. So now we need to spawn it. So let's see. Uh, air bash. Oops, it's with a bash. Oh, oh, this is the spider thing. Silly me. Spider events. There's nothing in there other than that one initialize. There we go. Okay, so air bash. Oh yeah, that's what we need to do. We I had created a another trigger in here, so you'll notice right at this frame there's an action point which that's a good question is it the same action point it might not be uh let me double check um punch that's what we want punch yep so it's a different point so we have to remember that air bash so i've copied the name of that point and so, oh yeah i forgot to check the trigger Okay, so let's go back here, and the trigger is called air bash all uppercase. All right, so we're going to do trigger, and see this one here? Mm -hmm. We're going to do the same thing, and we're going to do on air bash triggered, And we're going to create that. That's good. But now we need to also change its animation. Set animation to air bash. I think that's correct. So that's all good. The only thing is it right now. Let's see. What is the sprite called? Attack effect. Right now, it only stays anchored to the player at all times if it's playing the default animation. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to inset an or block. See how it says if it's uh, playing default or if it's a. T I just have to change this to say air um, bash. So if it's playing default or air bash, no, it'll stay stuck to the player. Okay. Um, so let's see if this is all working. What was the other thing I wanted to do? That's good for now. Let's just test things as we go now. Yep. 
Sweet. Did you see it? Yep. Looks good. We, we're going to need a cool sound effect for that. Spiffy. All right. But you. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Great. You can you can just rip it from the audio. Um, oh, from I, I just made it from so. your microphone. All right. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Cool. All right. Well, that worked out. Okay. So now we're gonna just do a cool effect, and just for drama, we're going to make the uh, the uh, rest of the game pause itself while he's doing that initial part of the animation, the tell part. It's so like the whole game will freeze and then um, and then everything will sort of wake up as he does the swing part. So the way to do that is, let's say air bash. So let's find the event that triggers the animation. Here it is, air bash. And right here, what we want to do is go into system and set time scale to zero. But the really important thing is that'll freeze him too. So now we we need to system uh, set object time scale, and we can choose the hero spriter file, and we restore him to 1.0. Mm -hmm. And then we know we have that trigger that's called I could just search trigger, and air bash right here. So here is where we would restore time to the whole game. So it's set time scale to 1.0. So that simply, by the way, that really cool idea of being able to apply time scale to specific objects, that was my idea. That was my request to Scara, patting myself on the back many, <laughs> many years ago. Anyway. Those, it's a very handy feature. It really is. So we can't tell yet. I need a bat on screen. Hey, slow poke. There we go. Nice. Nice. Very cool. All right. So now we need to make it so that you can actually hit something with this attack. Oh, that may have been my last bat, too. Oh. That was interesting. The way there was still a bat there the other way. They do move pretty fast. Yeah, they are. That's true. They are too fast. I forgot to tweak tweak that my favorite word so let's quickly yeah let's fix that that's just these guys right here we're gonna keep the slow poke because he's funny but all of these guys here let's see if I can alter no it looks like because they're different objects I can't do that so we gotta pick one type at a time so, here it is. Uh, S speed is, we'll make it 120 for now. That might be too slow, but too slow is easier to test with than too fast. Right. That's for sure. All right. Same thing here, 120. Okay, so now we need to decide actually if we are going to. Yeah, I think it'll actually be easier logistically to program this uh, feature if we actually make a uh, flying bat a separate object. So I'm going to uh, insert a new object and um, just a regular sprite object. Sprite. And we are going to load in the little two frame animation I made import frames from files and bat dizzy zero and one so it's just a little two frame animation keeping that pivot point in the center is good and then we just need the box to be a bit smaller maybe something like there's there we go something all around these lines and then we're going to apply that to the whole animation I'm going to make sure the animation loops and make that a much faster speed we'll do 20 so i'm guessing for now 
I'm going to call it uh, flying. No, well, not flying, but because the bat's always flying. Mm -hmm. uh, bashed bat. And the important thing is we need to give it a form of movement. And I think the best movement to give it, it's a good question. The bullet speed does allow for gravity, which is really cool. That might be everything we need. But I'm more used to using the uh, platformer behavior. So I'm going to give it a platformer behavior and see how that works out. Former, or platform. So we should... Let's compare its... I'm actually going to move it over for now to here, just so I can more easily compare the uh, all right, layers. I want to more easily be able to compare its behavior uh, stats to the players. So the important thing is the max speed and the fall speed and gravity. So we want this thing to really feel like it's been sent flying really fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, max fall speed 400. We're going to say easily three times that, so we'll do 1,200. Gravity, we might be able to keep gravity the same, but set its initial Y velocity to uh, 1,200. And hopefully that'll, um, that'll work, we'll see. Uh, and then max speed, we want him to move at a uh, almost vertical diagonal so we don't want him to move very far at all on the x so mm -hmm. i'm gonna try 80. oh and then the important thing is default controls definitely we want it to know otherwise we'd be controlling the bat at the same time that we control the player <laughs> um all right so i'm moving him back now to the spriter layout where we keep all of our sprites that are spawned and uh okay save the progress so now what's interesting is we're gonna do an event over in the actual gameplay events and we are going to that so right here is where the hero's attack box hits the bat and uh, mm -hmm. it makes him explode and stuff like that. So we are going to copy this and we're going to replace that hitbox sprite with the attack effect. And we also have to add another condition and we're going to make sure the attack effect animation is air bash i think it was like this right do you remember with the upper uppercase a and b yeah i think yeah, so that's right yeah all right and then so what we're going to do is we're going to spawn bashed bat instead of an explosion but we're still going to destroy the original bat that's fine now uh bird hit that's actually correct uh here when he blows up, this is where I was testing the uh, sound effects. We don't want bird hit. We want, uh, he, like, if you just hit him normally, we just want him to blow up. Um, but if you hit him with this bash, he, uh, he'll he go flying before he dies. Okay. So spawn that. Destroy the regular bat. Okay, that's all fine, except now we need to make some specific decisions based on the direction of the player. So we're going to add a sub-event and we are going to... Oh yeah, we have a variable now too. We could check with the variable or we could check with whether or not this um, hero is flipped or not. So let's see... is mirrored on x-axis. We'll, we'll invert that for now since that's facing to the right. And we are going to affect this um, bashed bat, and we're going to also flip this. Set mirrored or flipped. Is mirrored Y? No, horizontally. Okay. So make it not mirrored as well. And then we're going to copy this and paste it, and we're going to... So basically... 
he's either mirrored or not mirrored based on if the player is mirrored or not mirrored. Hmm. I think this will do the job. Let me think. Like, should I be checking just what direction the play, the uh, what side of the bat the player is on? No, I, th I think this will work. I think this will work. Hold on. But if you have misgivings, feel free to voice them. No, I mean, it, it's, it, it does seem like as you add, you know, more enemies and stuff, they, they may, we may need a different method later. Right. But, uh, yeah, like, what I'm thinking, though, is no matter what, if the player, like, let's say the worst case scenario happens where you were flashing and vulnerable, bat is flying through you, so you're technically facing the wrong way, but then you do the bash move. Still, like the 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 trajectory should be created by the direction of the the attack. Right, right. So even if he's behind you, he should go flying the way that your SWAT animation looks like you would be sending him if the, if a collision happens. So yeah, that's this, that's what I'm thinking. Sense, yeah. yeah. Hopefully yeah. this will work fine. But if not, yeah, we'll just uh, make more and more specific qualifiers to make sure that everything looks correct. So, let's see. So we're spawning that. All right, we're mirroring it now. One thing, no matter what we need to do, is set this thing's velocity to the super fast one, because it's going to appear and start falling slowly, just like the player would if it were suddenly in the air. Mm -hmm. So we need to just set that vector Y to the full 1200. Send him rocketing down. And then the other thing to do is now we're going to add a uh, new event below that says if bashed bat is mirrored then that's facing to the left we're going to simulate let's see simulate control and we're going to make it like you're holding to the left so that'll give it its left inertia and then negate or invert this and then right Okay, so that should all work. He should be in the air. He should start falling, but then he's just going to land on the ground harmlessly, which should be kind of funny to see. All right, let's see if let's see if we could actually hit one of these bats out of the air. Let me practice first. Okay. Nope, that's too high. <laughs> too far away. It's going to be tricky. Ouch. Nice. <laughs> that was awesome. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah. The movement was actually a little too fast downward, but it worked well. We need a sound effect. We need a an impact hit. That was cute. Sweet, though. It's working. All right. So let's reduce the, in the sprayer here, this. Let's reduce the max speed to something like 900, I guess. Okay. And let's also go to the gameplay events and switch this to 900. And let me think here. All right. And then let's just add another thing that says, uh, all right. So right here we destroy the regular bat, all the stuff here. So I'm going to copy and paste this again. And I'm going to replace this condition. And now it's going to be bash bat. And remember these great things, the triggers for the platform behavior. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do on landed. So if this thing hits the ground, and now we're going to make it sp spawn an explosion. But we need to replace batty with bash bat. So now if, if bash bat hits the ground, he's going to explode. And he's going to uh, destroy himself and he's going to add more points and he's going to play the explosion okay so let's just quickly test what we have so far all right <laughs> gotta get used to it there it is nice that was pretty darn <laughs> that that felt gratifying i must say you know what we need to get in there maybe not this time but definitely soon is a screen shake when when the bat slams into the ground yeah that'll be spiffy all right so now we have a decision to make, and that decision is what happens when one such bat collides with another one. So let's see, and to make this easier on myself, we're going to need more bats. 
So I'm going to create more. I'm going to get rid of, space them out fairly evenly. Some more bats going this way. And we'll make them easier targets by making them slow. All right. And then, so the question is going to be, I'm going to make these guys low and slow. What happens when one of the bats that's been sent flying hits into another bat? That's the question. Will it, like I want the initial bat to bounce off and go in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy. It's just a matter of deciding what the best physics is, the best behaviors, and then what happens to that bat. And I'm thinking of adding a counter to the bat itself. This is pretty complicated. So that the flying, the, the bashed bat that's just gone flying, let's say it starts with a counter of two. So the first bat it hits, it's going to make like a clone of itself. So it's going to make, basically create another one of these bats that's going to go flying, but it's going to now bounce the other way, and now the other one it's transferred that horizontal force to. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you could get some really nice chain reactions going. That's, that's what I'm thinking so far, but the counter makes it so it can't go on forever. Like it's got, it starts with a two points and it's down to one point. Once it's down to one point, I'm thinking it just blows up the next time it hits a bat. And then it the the bat it spawns has only one point the one that's going flying. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So that's that's what I'm thinking. We have the bashed bat landing on the ground and blowing up. That's fine. We have the uh, this. Where is the one that spawns? Okay. So right now this spawns one of the bashed bats. So this is going to be the tricky part here. I'm copying this. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to replace this with bash bat. Okay, so if a, a bash bat is overlapping batty, then batty will spawn another bash bat. This can get confusing. It's going to lose sight of which bash bat we're talking to, potentially. Mm -hmm. So I need to be really careful about that. So let's see. So we're going to need to ask some questions right off. The I was going to say right off the bat without intending that terrible pun. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, but um, Tish, that's awesome. Okay, so is it not mirrored? Then, yeah, see, this is going to be tricky because it, it's not going to know which thing I'm, I'm affecting here. So I feel like I might need to be super tricky. Yep, okay. The way around this is definitely a little convoluted but it should work fine and we that is that we are going to create a variable in the bat itself i've never done this before but uh, for uh game logic but i think it's going to work fine so right now it doesn't have any instance variables so we're going to give it an instance variable called spawn oh i did the double s accidentally this time spawn bashed and then that's going to be able to be zero means you don't spawn one. Negative one means you, you spawn one that should be going to the left and positive one should be one spawn one going to the right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now we can create a value, a variable in this bat or set a value to it, I should say. So I keep going to the wrong thing here. There we go. Okay. So now to get back on track here. Where's that event I created? Bashed. Bashed bat is overlapping batty. Here it is. Okay. What's going to happen now is we're not going to destroy it yet. We're going to add a blank sub event and we're going to destroy it later. Destroy. Oh yeah, in fact, we're not going to destroy it at all yet. Okay, this is tricky stuff. So I'm going to move this outside of this event for now. And we're going to move that there. All right, so add to the score is fine. So that'll be cool. Like, you'll get this chain reaction that's increasing your score mm -hmm. uh, each with each hit. 
and then playing bird hit is cool. So this also should be here. So here's the important part is that what we're doing instead of setting mirrored or not mirrored for the bashed bat itself. So I'm just going to drag these up here for now just to save them. And so now what we need to do is we're going to set this guy's new variable we made set value spawn bashed to one. So if it's not mirrored, then we want a basically not mirrored. I think this is right. We'll see. And I might have this backwards. We'll soon find out. All right. So we're setting that variable. Okay. So now we're going to do, we're going to add another condition and we're going to check if it's variable is so compare instance variable uh, spawn mat equals one if it equals one we're going to spawn it and we're going to set its vector nine we're going to destroy the bat and we're going to set um, bash bat to not mirrored um, that's all good and then What's interesting over here, I just remembered also, I want to reverse the direction of this original one. So we are going to do, oh yeah, and this shouldn't be here. I just noticed I've got the wrong object here. Mm -hmm. Those should be, oh, what am I doing? I'm up in the wrong thing. How did that happen? All right, that's fine. Hopefully I didn't change this. I, I belong here. So spawn equals one. All right, that's all fine. It's here that it shouldn't be here, or it should be bash bat. Replace condition, that's what I want. So we're going to do bash bat is mirrored. Invert. There we go. And then invert. Oh, yeah, it looks like I have these back. Oh, no, that's good. All right. So then batty spawn equals one or spawn equals negative one and set not set to mirrored i might as well do that last so it spawns yep okay so far so good however the last thing is when this initial impact happens we want the bashed bat himself to switch his mirroring right but we have to do that after we check whether he's mirrored or not right mm -hmm. so yeah this is complicated stuff but yeah so we we want the bash bat to hit a regular bat it's setting a value in that regular bat to say hey you're going to become a bashed bat yourself in a millisecond but before we do that we're checking which direction the bash bat is moving in the the current bash bat to sort of transfer that movement over but then we need to reverse the uh the bat after the fact so now we are going to right here so it was not mirrored is not mirrored so we're going to set that to mirrored here and not mirrored is what's going to happen to the one Okay, so that should make it bounce before it um, transfers that value over, which is going to make it spawn another one. So we theoretically, we can have the chain reaction thing. I didn't create the countdown so that it can't do an infinite, or it, it would never be infinite, but it, it can't create as big of a chain reaction. But for now, let's just see if this is working. Oh, I had to turn around. Darn it. Well, that worked. Okay, I think I'm going to need more. Uh, X movement to, for a higher likelihood of, yeah, the X movement is too slow. Ouch. All right, this is going to be tough. Let us increase the X movement of uh, this by quite a bit. So we'll say 300 because it hardly has any time to move because the vertical movement is so fast. Mm -hmm. Save our progress and let's see what the trajectory looks like now. Okay. 
keep forgetting to hold up. <laughs> oh, so close. All right. Didn't feel like his uh, X movement changed that much, did it? So we really need to uh, really need to increase that even more. Max speed. So we're going to say 900 on that as well. Theoretically, that should make him move at a perfect 45 degree angle, I think. But I could be okay. wrong. Oops, I'm playing the wrong layout again. Not this time. <laughs> All right. And I need to spawn a high bat first thing. I've got two low ones for no reason. Well, that movement didn't seem to change, which it really should have. Oh, maybe my... Um, I didn't check carefully. Is it his inertia? Um, acceler uh, acceleration is really high. Can't really fault that, I don't think. Max fall speed. You would think that would make him move at a perfect diagonal. All right, let's see what happens now. <laughs> we should probably limit it so you can... Oh, that certainly did it. Darn it, I missed the uh, downward angle there. Turn around. I'm working with a squishy Xbox uh, controller. I'm not getting the tight controls. I would. Okay, so that definitely... It's strange that the other setting did virtually nothing twice, and now it's working like... All right, so... Max speed. Let's try 900 again. Maybe something went wrong there. You should call it the Meteor Bash. Definitely. All right. I turned around accidentally. I keep doing this. Goes to show you, like I always thought this... Yeah, say that that had a nice diagonal movement. There. That worked. Oh, worked. We, yeah, we, we didn't see it well because the other one was so low. He hit the ground really fast because of mm -hmm. that. Man, man, that's <laughs> nice. Okay. Maybe the ones that get hit by another bat like don't shouldn't fly down quite as fast, you know, or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if that would be really difficult, but. No, that would actually be a matter of during the spawning thing for one and negative one. When you're spawning the new one, all you would need to do is uh, set its uh, max, let's see, max fall speed to, um, I think the original one is 900, right? Yeah. I believe. So 600, something like that. And then we could even change this to 600 as well. And so that would need to come first. Do that. And then 600. Okay. And let's see. There's one other thing, one other sneaky thing I could try, and that is right now, like everything's happening so fast, but we actually, uh, I hate the fact that I keep turning around accidentally. Alright, cool. Like we literally have an event that changes the, uh, the time ratio of the game mm -hmm. right when he's uh, doing this attack. So we could literally make the game play at like 25% speed just for our own selfish debugging purposes. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's kind of a bullet time Yeah, thing. exactly. So, time... Oh, it's time scale with a space. Time, space, scale. Okay. So right here... We're going to change that to 0 0.2, 20% speed. And like I said, we're going to start spawning vertical ones a little sooner. All right. Plenty of bats. 
There. Okay. So it looked like that's all fine. That's all fine. Let's see if we can get another bounce. Or, ah, darn it. Here, what? <laughs> Slow motion man. All right. All right, well, there's no more lower bats, so let's just restart it and see if we can get lucky with that first bat. We, I can also add an event so when he lands... Oops. Man, I'm not used to how fast the game is normally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can make it so that when the player lands, time goes back to normal. That'll be less okay. frustrating. Some kind of slow-motion running nightmare sequence we have going here. Come over here, Bat. Let's see if I can time this properly. All right. So I think I think the maybe the wrong one is changing direction. It feels that way. Let me run this. Let me just quickly add this event to bring time back to normal. Uh, so on land, or is it unlanded? On landed. There we go. We are going to set time scale back to 1.0. Just let's do a little more testing so we can really see what's going on because it's still pretty hard to tell. Okay. Let me know if you see it. Which of the two bats does the uh, goes in the new direction? Okay. Just missed them. Oops. This is going to be tough. But it's mostly working. That's cool. Ah, get up there. Darn it. <laughs> oh, man. Restart. <laughs> when you want a really specific thing to happen, it can be true. Pain in the butt. Come on, you. Why? It's amazing how infrequently the... There. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it so that the... The new... Yeah, otherwise we're never going to be able to tell. Mm -hmm. The new bat, the one that hits, theoretically, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Theoretically, the one that just hit the other one, it's hitting something on the top. So we can make it bounce upward. That'll make it super obvious. Yeah. So we have the actual, we need the actual collision with bash bat on the um, regular bat. Here it is. In this instance, we are going to make this bash bat's vector y to be a negative number. Negative, we'll do 600. All right, let's see what it looks like. Okay. All right, something definitely bounced. <laughs> Yep. All right, let's see. Okay. Is there another good opportunity? I don't think there is. Yes. Okay, so the bat that got created is going the wrong way. It's just simply a matter of swapping these values. I think. Yes. I think so. Let's see what happens. There. All right, so he went, he stayed in his own direction now. I mean, he's the one that's supposed to bounce. Let's see. Right? That was inadvertent. Wow. Oh, we're starting to get the chain reaction stuff happening. That one doesn't matter, it's this one. Okay. That was pretty cool, but he's definitely not turning around, right? Yeah. Uh, the one that's hitting the others is not turning around. Uh, even though, clearly here, if it's overlapping, we do this stuff, we make him go upward, and we set... Yeah. Here, okay, so let's move this stuff down so it's easy to, easier to see. 
Okay, so if it's mirrored, you press left. I get maybe this is how I'm confusing myself with mirrored versus not mirrored versus negative one versus and positive one. There's a lot of moving parts here, as, as they say. I mean, I can just switch this to see if it fixes one thing, but I think it'll break the other. I think everything will start going the wrong way now. After 50 tries to uh, actually bounce. So I'm going to ignore the first bat. Ah, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> yep, okay. So yeah, no, I can't change that. So what I need to change is... That's the thing that confuses me. Like right here, I'm definitely should be reversing the direction, no matter what the direction is. Oh, I see. Okay, that okay. That's dumb of me. So you'll see right here. Let's say it does start out not mirrored, right? The bat, mm -hmm. because it starts out not mirrored, it's going to get mirrored, and then this will be true immediately after. Right, right. So that's a big problem. Maybe changing this to an else will fix it. That's an interesting um, theory. Yeah. Let's see if that. Let's see if this will work. Is that how you add an else? Yes, else. Is it mirrored? And is it not mirrored? Theoretically, this might work. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think that should work. Okay, he went flying the other way. That was good, right? That's what we wanted. He bounced off. And did the other one continue in the appropriate direction? The one that's getting hit should go to the right. If I hit it. I think it did, but I can't remember. Nope. They're both going to the right. Uh, to the left, I'm sorry. All right, mm. so what we are doing is that is if it overlaps, that's these values here. There we go. All right, so I, the, the obvious problem now is there is no gravity to the other bat. Mm -hmm. which is weird. What's causing that? It is a platform object and it's never disabled. So why is gravity never taking effect? It just keeps going up on a diagonal. That's really weird. But we're making good progress. So actually, now that that's working, do we want gravity at all? Do we want it to bounce upward? Like maybe I'm fixing a bug that's not relevant anyway. Like maybe I just get rid of this toggle disabled like do we want everything to continue moving in a downward direction I just disabled the uh, the upward bounce we'll see how this feels oh you <laughs> <laughs> yeah that felt pretty good Gotta say, it's a lot of fun slamming them into the ground, too. Well, I think it's mostly working. I think we're gonna have to try some um, real world level design setup situations and see if we can set up some really nice intentional chains and stuff at a later date to um, to really perfect the uh, the movement. But that's that's what it would be. It's just now that we get the right directions going and stuff like that, it's just going to be changing the velocities and um, maybe even collision boxes and stuff like that to get everything feeling really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do for tonight's video is uh, we're going to see if we can add the screen shake effect I had mentioned, get a nice little, uh, little impact uh, camera shake for when the uh, smashed bat goes flying into the, the ground and hits it. So in order to do that properly, I did want to eventually make the camera controls more sophisticated anyway. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a camera sprite object that we can sort of use to indirectly give us more control of the scrolling so it won't be purely based on the, um, the player's position anymore. So I'm going to go into layers and make sure I'm on FG, double click, and we're going to add a sprite. 
and we're just going to make it a small like 16 by 16 and we'll just draw some something to let us know it's the camera so we'll make it look like some kind of weird eye good enough uh, the alpha was zombie eye yep okay zero is completely transparent so 255 there we go okay so there's our eye or camera all right so we'll call it camera and we're going to create a variable called shake or we'll call it quake to be even cooler all right and it starts at zero okay and what we want to do is we want to find the every tick there's got to be an every tick come on now okay so that's the thing I didn't put the I'll put the every tick in just because like I said it's more clear and it's mm -hmm. the same meaning as and condition every tick there we go okay so this is the one where we can now set the camera we're going to always set its x position for now to just be exactly the same thing as the player box's x coordinate mm -hmm. that part is simple but with the with the y coordinate we're going to do camera set y to the player box is y but we're going to do plus and then we're going to do the camera its value alterable value which is where quake there we go and then we're going to do we're going to add an event below that says every so many portions of a second we'll say a 25th of a second and we're going to say add another condition camera compare instance value quake is um, not equal to zero and we're going to take this quake value and we're going to set value quake to quake times negative 0 0.7 so this is not only going to reduce it in overall size it's going to keep inverting it so it's going to keep going from a negative value to a positive value mm -hmm. and that's going to change the um, the vertical position of this the camera sprite so horizontally it'll always be perfectly aligned with the player but vertically it's going to go up and down in a ever shrinking degree if quake ever gets set to above zero so now what we need to do is actually make the quake value get changed so we are going to do on landed and find where the bat lands and makes the explosion and all we have to do is do camera set value quake and we'll make it something fairly extreme for now to um make sure we're going to be able to see it so the other problem right now we can test it but the only thing we're going to see is the sprite following us around and we're going to see it shake all right so it's there where it should be so all i need to do is all right did you see the... okay so it's working oh the time got time got frozen uh we need to undo that all that time stuff but otherwise mm -hmm. it is working okay excellent so let's get rid of all that time stuff that we put just for the sake of testing things so let's do time scale time scale and we want the initial pause but we don't want this anymore we don't need it and we definitely don't want this otherwise it's good and so now the other thing we need to do is right now we have a behavior under the uh, actual player box a scroll to 
-hmm. and we need to delete it from here. We don't want the camera to follow him anymore. We want the, the scrolling to follow the camera, if that makes sense. Behavior, add, scroll to, SCR. There we go. So now, theoretically, the scrolling should look identical to the way it used to, except now we're going to have a, a camera shake. Uh-oh. Apparently, I deleted the wrong thing that returns the time scale. Uh, time scale. Okay, that's fine, but yeah, now we're missing one. So that would be trigger. Trigger. So right here, we need time scale. Air bash triggered. We need time scale to be one here, so I got rid of it in the wrong place. Set time scale to 1.0. Okay. All right, let's try that again. Okay, I didn't see a single screen shake. Is that because. There, okay, it did it. Oh, oh, this could be a matter of, okay, let me test something here. This might make things go pretty wonky. All right. So if we click this, you see unbounded scrolling? Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn this to yes. So our scrolling is going to be all off at first, most likely. Like, let's see. Yeah, okay. But now I should, of course, I can't see the bat, but there. Okay, so now the screen shake is working, though. If you see that, mm -hmm. it's too slow and it's too extreme because I set it to 20. But it's it's working great now, so we know it's just the, the layout size isn't quite big enough. Uh, so we're going to do that again. So these are these might just be like tweaks that we can do while we're not filming later on to perfect it. But now I know what is the cause. And so I'm going to turn unbounded scrolling back off. And we can hide the sprite since we know it's working properly. So that won't be visible anymore. And then we're going to change this to a lower value. We can actually search for 20, I would imagine. Yep. So make that something more like 12. And so the reason it wasn't working is we need the height of this layout. Right now, it's barely big enough to vertically scroll. And if we're down on the ground, then the camera can't go down anymore, if that makes sense. So we need to give it more room to scroll. So we'll just add uh, something like, oops, what was the number before? Darn it. I think it was 240. Yeah, so we'll make it 250. Okay. Now the scrolling might be broken a little bit, but I can just uh, move the positions of the stuff in specific lay uh, layouts to fix that later. Mm. Okay. Oh, maybe, yeah, when we're scrolled all the way up at the top. That makes sense. Yeah, it's working when we're lower because it at least has room to scroll upward. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, one of the things too, the camera should not be down at his feet, so I'm going to make this visible again. Oops, I made the wrong thing visible. Visible. Make this invisible like it should be. Okay, and right now we just have it purely based on, we'll do every... Uh, every tick, see how it's Y is just the player box Y and then the camera. Mm -hmm. We're going to do minus something like 40 pixels because the camera shouldn't be down. It shouldn't be trying to center the screen down at his ankles. It should be more like near his head area. Mm -hmm. So tweaking all of these numbers is eventually going to get us back where we belong. Already the scrolling looks better vertically, like it's not offset in the wrong way. But we still have that issue. Okay, it's everything's working except you can go, you can scroll so high that it has nowhere to scroll. Okay, let's see. And let's also speed up the screen shake because that's really annoying. That it so we'll make it a tenth of a second. 
It's more than twice as fast as it currently was. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, this is going to be a bunch of number tweaking, so I'm going to get the logic working, but then I'll probably perfect the numbers off camera, and then in our next video I'll show what the final numbers were quickly. All right. All right, so uh, what we need to do is we're going to limit the scrolling of the camera so that it guarantees us to always have the room. So we're going to clamp the potential Y value of the camera position. Uh -huh. So it's got to... So let's see what the full height... So the full height is... Uh, I made it 250. Uh -huh. So we're going to do... 250, yeah, okay, so uh, let me think here. Like, I, I kind of need to know, I can't need to, yeah, it's probably 200, okay. All right, let's see. Like I said, these numbers are going to need some tweaking after, so. But what we're going to do is we are going to isolate this, and we're going to do the, I think it's called clamp. Okay, so the X would be this, the lower value would be, like I know we gave it some room for vertical scrolling, so let's say we gave it 15 pixels, so so half of 250, no, no, half of, we'll do one, so the lowest the number will be able to be is 115, and the highest it will be able to be is... Half of 250 is 225, and we'll minus 10, so 215. Yeah, this is definitely wrong, but the logic is mostly right. I'm just doing terrible math. But that's the right idea. We need, we need to clamp it so that it always stays within the what should be the scrollable area minus the extra wiggle room we gave it for the screen shake. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's... There, okay. Yeah, it works. Very nice. And now let me do a low bat and see if it works while it's low. It might not. No, even that worked. Okay, so yeah, my numbers are not perfect, but they were good enough to get the job done. And that, that <laughs> definitely adds a nice effect, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So, and then we can, yeah. So I will perfect those numbers later, but for now, they definitely seem pretty on point. And... Um, what do you think about the speed of the screen shake? Let me restart quickly. Oh yeah, you're on screen share too, so it's probably not going to be... Yeah, Like it might actually be a tiny bit too fast now. So we'll just make this something like this. One more okay. quick test. Let's see. Yeah, it feels pretty good, um, although it seemed to last a little longer than I would like. Yeah. Okay. But that's all easy stuff. Like right now, I just have it multiplying by negative 0.7, so it might never reach a perfect zero. So I'm going to make it kill itself more specifically. Well, I'll do that really fast, actually, if you don't mind. Um, no, it's fine. So right here is where we're changing that, and then we're just going to add a sub-event. And in this sub-event, we're going to compare two values, and we're going to compare the absolute value, um, absolute value of uh, Quake. So if it is, if the absolute value is, if for anyone that doesn't know what absolute value is, it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. So if the absolute value of Quake is less than, we'll say, 1, which, you know, we're talking about pixels here. So once we're lower than a pixel, there's no point in having the screen shake value. So if it's uh -huh. less than 1, then we're going to set it to 0. So we're going to set Quake. Where's the camera? There it is. Camera set value of Quake to 0. There we go. And then that's the other thing too. We could make it die off faster, which I think would have helped. All right, so now we're just tweaking stuff. There we go. It's still lasting a little longer than I want, but 
the right idea is happening. Oh, actually, I made it worse, not better. Uh, that should have been six, not... Yeah, it was seven originally, and I want it to die down faster, so I made it worse when I made it eight, because it was keeping most of its absolute value instead of... Um, does that make sense? Yeah. There we go. Dice down nice and fast. Cool. All right, and uh, I think that will be it. We'll keep it short and sweet, and um, we won't drag it on until I start getting so confused I waste more time than make progress. So uh, thanks as usual, Corey, for joining me for this uh, video, and thanks for the awesome art you've made recently that we haven't been able to show off yet in this video with the new... Um, uh, enemies for that are going to be replace the bat in this level uh, mm -hmm. and thank you everyone for watching